Hi, this is your host Sapna Bhartia and welcome to TFR's Linode Success Stories. And today we have with us Dev Mukherjee, CEO of Anomaly Software. Dev, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you. Since this is the first time we're talking to each other, I would love to know a bit more about the company. Tell us, what do you folks do? So we're a software engineering company. Uh, we've been going for about a decade. Um, and, um, you know, what we, we like to, what we like to focus on is essentially understanding technology deeply and then applying that to, um, you know, problems in the, in the business space. So, well, elevator pitches, if you're, if you're a bank trying to invent internet banking, then we're the company you come to. So we understand various bits of technology. So be it mobile, be it internet, uh, and then we put that together. So, well, uh, you know, uh, at heart, we're just a deep software engineering company. Uh, we're, Essentially, a two-part agenda. We um, one understand the technologies and then lend it to our customers to build products for them, um, and then use the revenue to uh, pursue products and services of our own. Uh, we're, d we're deeply invested in open-source technologies. Um, we, we're a business. In fact, the business, the technology that built us is open-sourced. Um, so. Back in 2010, um, we took to understanding APIs deeply. Um, we built a, a framework that um, allows you to build um, REST APIs very rapidly, and we open sourced that. We used that technology then to build large system for uh, healthcare, tertiary education, universities. Um, we did a lot of work in like reg tech, um, and, and then, then then you know accelerated that. And, and and have done work in various fields. Again, very deep technology software. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for explaining that. Now, if I may ask you, are you catering to a specific industry or segment, or uh, it's you know it doesn't matter. Uh, if if yes, who are those? It doesn't matter for us at the minute, but we've given our position. We've been servicing um, education, healthcare. As you said, you folks use leverage a lot of open source. Can you just share what open source technologies are you guys using? Our entire stack is open source. So, um, you know, anything from obviously Linux through to databases like Postgres. Um, uh, we love Python, like everything we write is in, is in Python on the server side. Um, our open source uh, REST framework is in Python. Um, on the front end, we choose um, Things like React. Um, we were a big fan of Tailwind, uh, CSS. And, um, so, yeah, uh, through and through, uh, all of our stack, all of our build tools, uh, you know, the, the classic open source. And maybe it comes from when I was in university. I was a big fan of open source tech but, uh, that flows through. And it's not just that you folks use uh, open source technology. You also are very kind of careful who you work with and you folks, you know, uh, are leveraging Lidot, you know, they're offering their services. So tell, tell us, you know, how you are leveraging their infrastructure and what kind of things you're building on top of Linode. The story goes back that we uh, rolled our own uh, hosting infrastructure, uh, which was virtualized um, because some of our customers wanted it here in Australia back in, you know, like late 2000s. Nobody was offering, um, affordable virtualized hosting. Um, we, we got into the market and then we came across Linode and that's where the relationship started. So we, uh, we again, we're a software company, so we, we never wanted to do an infrastructure um, and we had to do infrastructure because nobody was doing that here. Um, and immediately as we came across Linode, we started using the infrastructure to deploy workloads uh, simplicity is what, uh, I guess, brought us to Linux. Um, other providers, I mean, there's complexity there, which we didn't need at the time. Um, we can, and, you know, Linux offers competitive services to the other providers. So it really brought us to that. Um, I mean, for us as a software engineering company, we go from anywhere to deploying uh, test quality assurance through to production um, workloads and 
Yeah, and that's how we got started. Uh, it's it's a wonderful relationship with them. We can get support, um, and yeah, it, it works well for us and our customers. What are the most exciting or innovative projects that you folks are working on, which is also taking advantage of Linode? A few things, actually. Um, one of them is um, a project called Relay. Um, it's um, it's an we call it an EV charging concierge. So it's a it's a project that's focusing on queuing people up to use charges, uh, electric vehicle charges around the world. Um, uh, there are several others, but uh, that's that's the one we're sort of focused on at the moment. That's the one we are trying to take to market first. Now let's talk about another project that you are going to mention. One of the projects we, uh, we've got a, a few things in the pipeline. One of the things we're working on is with um, some local government customers. Um, and it's actually going to be one of our biggest open source projects. Um, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to build a software infrastructure that local government customers can use to bring services online. It's a, it's a very, unfortunately, a very poor thing in Australia uh, where um, software is overtly expensive for customers in the local government space to bring their services online. So what we're trying to do is work with a few of our customers and, and build modules that they can use to bring their services online and be independent of a software vendor um, and then invest um, in a public service to, I guess, serve their customers better. So I can talk about uh, a third project. So we happen to be also happen to be um, partners with Stripe, the payment company. Um, and over the over the uh, pandemic, what we noticed was there was a space where communication after payments um, was missing. So the, the the problem domain is you've accepted a payment, and then there's a workflow post that where you either want to send communication to your customer or um, you know, you, you you wish some automation to happen. So we're working on a platform that actually allows that automation uh, deeply integrated with um, with Stripe. Um, also happens to be built on Linode. Now, if you look at this space, whether you call it, you know, hyperscalers or alternative cloud cloud providers like Linode, it's a crowded, a busy space. Why did you folks choose Linode? And also, uh, is there something unique about the way they work? Because what I do know personally is that uh, it's not, you are not a cattle, you know, you are treated as a pet. You don't, I mean, in cloud, we like the cattle analogy, but as customers, we don't want to be cattles. We like to be pets. So so talk about, you know, uh, why Linode? Customer support was where they won our heart. Um, so back in the day, you know, uh, I remember one of our engineers, like we stuffed up one of our uh, VMs kernels. And I remember like we lodged a ticket and it was five minutes later, our VM was fixed um, and, and we were back online. So like customer support at that level, it wasn't it wasn't someone just getting back to us saying, you know, hi, we'll look at this. We'll, we'll escalate this to somebody. It was the, the person responding to us um, was clearly technical, had the problem fixed in uh, less than 10 minutes. Um, uh, like you said, the, the being, being pets, like I, I remember tweeting at them uh, some years ago saying, you know, we would really like a Sydney data center. And years later when the Sydney data center came online, I remember their communication person actually tweeting back at me saying we're online. I mean, th th that's, that's some level of detail there. Um, we we really like transparency, so we're you know under ten person team. Um, what we do is harness infrastructure to kind of power us. So the green light program, for example, uh, so we know when managed databases will come online. We know when certain things will happen. What what that lets us do is we kind of make a six month plan. We just go like for six months, you know, we have to run databases. In six months' time, this product comes online. So transparency, um, yeah, the human communication is, is I guess, what draws us. Awesome. Now, uh, second question that I am going to ask you is going to be more about uh, uh, Linode is one of the cloud providers that use the term, you know 
alternative cloud providers and you folks uh, do a lot of work in open source. Sometimes I do see a lot of, you know, alignment there, the values that you look at with the open source community and the things the way Linode do. So can you share your, you know, what do you think about the term and what value these alternative cloud providers bring to the developer community? Uh, once again, going to the point that you are not a ticket or a cattle you are treated, you know, as a very, very valued customer. So to, to talk about the value that you see there. Yeah, I mean, the word alternate to me is almost irrelevant because I, I think there's a value proposition that they bring to the table. That it, 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 they, they, for us, it's a, it's a partnership and, and you can't form that with some of the, you know, if you will, the big four. Um, and uh, to us, it, it's it's you know they they are able to speak to us at a level where we know that when we go to market, someone's got our back. And to me, that's the value proposition. Like in, that, that we're going in. Um, you know, we're a, we're a, there, there's some things that really sing to us. Uh, uh, and kudos to uh, uh, to Chris and the team that it's an infrastructure company that was built out of cash flow. So they know business. We're a software company built out of cash flow. So the, the values align there. And, and when we go to market with a product, we, when we speak to them, we, we kind of know that they've got our back and, and that's, that's really valuable when, you know, uh, when, when you're betting your own money on the market, um, you, you want someone, like you said, like you want someone who's, who's a friend. Dave, thank you so much for taking time out today. And of course, not only share uh, your own story, what you folks do, but also how you leverage open source technologies and Lidor's infrastructure. Uh, thanks for sharing those insights. And I would love to have you folks back on the show. Thank you. It'd be lovely. Thank you.